What would you say is the meaning of life to you? The meaning of life is love, 100%. Love across any, like across anything, huh? Yeah. It could be love for anything. You could love to skate. You could love to make clothes. You could love your girlfriend so much that she's worth living for. And that's what hot model sex is, man. It's like love. Love. It's literally the greatest thing ever. That, I, that's like a, that's an interesting way of capturing life in one word because you got to love everything you do. Yeah, love is just everything. Yeah, I mean. First of all, I just want to welcome you to the headspace, man. Oh, it was cool, nice. man. Yeah, man. As a, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling blessed to be here, to be honest. So you start, you start every night. You like, you go to sleep like with a pure like head. So you, like, wake mm -hmm. up on some like fresh shit. Every night I'm just thinking, really, just thinking, thinking, thinking. Mostly about orders too. And then when I wake up, I'll check my messages. Like right, like probably wake up at six, seven a.m. Just check my email, check my DMs, check this, check that people are always like I order this that that I just want to be in tune with people yeah so right. immediately when I start that it's already hit for that day I already took care of the people that are trying to like yeah. get a response out of me you feel me yeah so from moving forward I go to the factory and I can get the work done so I was like a how's that even feel like getting that love in the morning when you wake up and like yo I ordered this or like yo it's like you see comments you're like man I love this it's a trip because like when you have a brand you're working in your sleep so when you wake up and you check your phone you can see how many orders you got, and it's basically a trip because you could have made, you know, five, six, could have made seven thousand dollars last night in your sleep. Yeah. You don't even know. It's an even bigger trip to see where people order things to, you know, Czech Republic or like Russia or just anywhere. It's like, damn, somebody out there is gonna be rocking this. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like it's worldwide. Like yeah, it'll be worldwide. cool to like fly out there and see like randomly, oh, this person's wearing hot model sex. I actually was in Paris and um, I was at a club. This club, it's like four stories down. I was with the homegirls and the homie. And uh, they were like, yo, turn around. And I turned around and somebody's wearing a Hot Mile Sex t-shirt. That's and I was sick. Like, and that was, in, that was in Paris like a few months ago. It was a trip. Well, as a kid, were you always into fashion? Yeah, always when I was a kid. I used to watch um, America's Next Top Model a lot, uh -huh. like a lot. I used to be super intrigued at that. I don't know why. I just, I thought it was amazing how somebody with looks can make a living off of that. Like oh, you're okay. simply just born unique and you can make a living like a blessed living. You don't gotta work, you can travel the world, buy what you want, eat what you want. I thought that was like amazing. So when I was a kid, that's all I would watch. Dude, would you pay attention more for that, the fact that they could do whatever they want because of how good they look? Or would you ever be like, that's a cool outfit or like what they put on here was cool? Oh, everything, like the whole show was great. Even the fact of like hearing the people's stories, like seeing if somebody came from the ghetto or somebody came from a well-off family, it's just different perspectives, you know? Growing up in Michigan, there's not, too many people even talk to how it is like in LA you can meet somebody you can learn something from them. in Michigan a lot of people kind of live the same life more so so even watching the show it's interesting to see like a beautiful girl come on and talk about her life and where she's from and what she does for work now and that she's trying to chase her dreams it's like it was inspiring it was like yeah Damn, that person came from New Jersey trying to trying to make it a model that's crazy yeah like how much they progressed like they got to this like a milestone yeah, now nah, I'm watching them you know straight I mean? up it's like it's random what brands did you like like a lot back then I like too many brands to be honest. I, I really just like fit. Okay. Like fit me and feel I'll wear a lot of blank stuff. Uh -huh. Just cause like I'll go to the thrift a lot and just buy like a lot of really, really generic blank stuff like Russell hoodies, Russell zip ups. I just like the fit of everything and like the feel. Uh, how was like thrifting over there? Like what would you find? It's fire. Was it, is it unique, uh, different from here? Way different because uh, in Michigan it's more so like outerwear uh -huh. and it's more so like knit sweaters, wool pants. Stuff that's like interesting for real to yeah. wear and to think about and look at versus like out here, it's kind of just a, a lot of fast fashion t-shirts and long sleeves. The population is higher. So there's more of like bullshit clothes basically. Do you think people in LA care more about that persona of like having the nice car, having the nice clothes? Yeah, definitely. Because in Michigan, it's not really business oriented. So no one cares to do business with you. Obviously, if I see a dude with an AP on, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go talk to him with yeah. a dude with no AP because it's like he's successful in business. Whatever we do together is most likely going to be successful. Yeah. You know? So appearance is everything in LA, even the car you drive, you know, pulling up somewhere, even what you wear, obviously your fit could tell a lot, but you got to dress upper echelon to present yourself how you want to be presented. Yeah. So that's what I learned too. Like you just got to always look sharp. You got to smell good. You can't just be on no bullshit versus in Michigan. It's people are really content. You know, they have jobs, nine to fives. No one's really trying to be successful 
beyond having a house and having a job. Yeah. There, which is not a problem at all, but in LA it's way different. I'm trying to push a business or idea, you need to put your all in and you need to tap in and connect with people that you possibly would never even tap in with or talk to or connect. It's way different. So when you came here, like, did you know anyone? Like, no, what? I didn't know anyone. I knew one kid from Instagram, uh, this, this kid, Jakeem, and uh, we would kick it. But that's the only person I ever knew. I never met him. I just seen him on IG once and I fuck with him. Well, like, you're, you're in LA. Like, how'd you start meeting all these people? Like, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. Like, how'd that go down? I used to skate a lot. So, um, when I used to skate, I used to go to Stoner, the skate park Stoner mm -hmm. in Santa Monica. When I first moved here, I would go there every day because I didn't have a job or like anything. So I would just come here and I would just skate and that's where I'd meet people, I'd tap in with people. And I quickly learned that LA was way different than Michigan. Mm -hmm. Just by the way people approach you, just by the way that people won't say what up to you. They're like, just how, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I quickly learned the tone of LA versus Michigan because I used to skate a lot. So at the skate park, you're talking a lot. When people meet you, is there something like that they're like kind of surprised by or like caught off guard? Like, how they see you versus like on social media versus how you are in person. When I meet people, they just say I'm more so down to earth because I like to tap in with people for real. Like mm -hmm. I'll meet somebody that fucks with me and like kick it with them the whole day because at the end of the day, we're just human beings. And if you think that you're greater than me, you're wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone's like literally the same flesh and bone. It's just like, so that's, that's how I'm, I'm always trying to move. I'm never trying to compare myself. The only time I'll do that is when I know somebody is a bad person versus a good person. Mm -hmm. Like obviously, I'm gonna be better than you if I'm like physically good, mentally good, versus you, you got bad intentions and you can spot somebody like that off rip. So you, you're pretty good at spotting them pretty quick. Oh, 100%, dude. Growing up in Michigan, I grew up with the craziest kids, man. Just like people that were like really getting into shit, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, so I really, they taught me and, and the people they brought me around, they really taught me that like, yo, life is, is not a joke and somebody would try to finesse you, somebody would try to jug you, somebody, this girl will try to set you up. I learned all that shit so young. And I was like, damn, like, this is real life. Like, people will really set you up. Yeah. So I just learned quickly. You know, I wasn't, like, sheltered at all. Are people, like, I feel like people are shocked by that now when you just check up on them just to, like, see if they're good. They always expect, like, yo, are you good? All right, cool, but I need this. Yeah, yeah. So are people, like, shocked by that when you do that? Well, back then when I first moved here, I would kind of call people, and I think they had that demeanor toward me, but now... It's like a, um, my life is a little bit different. So when I call people, I just really want to check up on them. Okay. And then like at the end of the conversation, I'm be like, all right, I'm gonna catch you. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll just Versus see Versus like, I need this or I need that. When designing, how would you like rank from, let's say from least important to most important, fit fabric and design? Definitely it goes exactly how you said, fit fabric and then design. Okay. That's like literally like exactly what I want. Fit is everything to begin with. You could wear anything, any material. You could wear like PVC plastic. As long as it fit your body correctly, it wouldn't, it wouldn't feel like you, you were wearing anything bad. And then fabric, the drapey fabric, the thick fabric, you could wear anything, any cut, any shape, as long as it was good fabric. Okay. And then like fit, fit is like somewhat so easy to come up with because human bodies, they're just, they're human bodies, they're stuck. You know, you have two arms and two legs. How much different could you really change? So over the years of fashion making, you know, people just, people have kind of like figured every damn near every shape. You know yeah. what I mean? You could tweak it semi, but everything you do in a sense has been done before in terms of shape. Basically. Yeah. Is that where, like, where would you find your most inspiration for like design or fabric or fit? Like, is it just walking daily life? Like looking at what this person wearing, how can I elevate it? It's more so like feelings, you know, mm -hmm. like from the past or from the present, just seeing somebody and, and feeling like a feeling is like, damn, like that'll translate directly to clothes. If you really can make clothes, you could have an experience happen to you and then really make a jacket from that experience. Like that jacket I just made, it was just being around so many homeless people that had that jacket. It was like a whole certain vibe to that jacket. Oh. So when I'm wearing that jacket, it's just like you feel safe in a way. You feel like covered. What's well, like one of your favorite fits to rock right now? All white for sure. All white? All white, yeah. Is there a specific like material or is like this type of all white, like comfy all white? All white, not really comfy all white. I don't really like being comfy at all. Like uh -huh. I wear jeans usually all the time. Right now it's leather, white denim, and um, a lot of furs. That's like my favorite thing to rock. But it's just more so about changing my life. How I said I used to ride the bus a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like 
Now I have a luxurious car. It's way different. I could straight up wear anything I want. Like I, I won't be getting dirty. I could wear yeah, some feel you. crazy pants, a crazy jacket, and I don't got a trip. Like that's yeah. the whole thing about life changing and, and the hot model sex, the whole meaning behind it. How would you say you marketed your brand to go up? I just posted straight up whatever. I didn't think about anything I posted. Like when mm -hmm. I was first starting it, the first video I shot was in Detroit actually. Mm -hmm. And I used these two models from Detroit and I had 80 followers at the time. And I paid the homie Drew Kilo to film it. I think I paid him like 500 bucks or something. I was like, yo, let's film this. And I remember when the girls got there, they were like, what's your Instagram? And I told them, I, I was like, his username, 848-2727183. And they were like, what the fuck? They were like, oh, you're on some <laughs> bullshit. And I was like, nah, I'm not on bullshit. Just trust, it's gonna go up. And like, wow. <laughs> it did, yeah. How, how'd you go about like, let's say building the community and like, it seems like the people you have that, for example, are your followers and really like what you do they're really like in touch. They're like kind of like a cult. Yeah. So how do you go about like building that community strong? A hundred percent transparency. And I, and I told everyone that like, this is for real a family. Everyone that purchased from me is a family. You could DM me about anything, like straight up. Mm -hmm. I've had people DM me the craziest stuff, man. Just paragraphs and paragraphs. And I, and I read it and I respond and I, and I intake people, you know, that grew up in abusive households, they'll hit me up and they'll be like, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. I try to hit these people back because I know how it is when you don't got nobody to reach out to. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not an asshole. You're just, you're just buying some shit from. It's like, you're buying something from me, but you're actually supporting a real human being. Yeah. You're not supporting somebody that's going and, and copping like a big ass chain or a big ass, like, like whatever I'm doing is like straight up like me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think what I've seen like from posts and other stuff is what you do very well is associate your brand with like high fashion. It kind of like elevates the brand as well even though how you're saying it clashes, like, was that always that was just natural? Like this just went well with this? I always knew I thought a certain way and I wanted to live a certain way, but I was never like that, uh -huh. you know? Growing up or like when I came out here, man, you get treated crazy, you feel me? Yeah. Like when you're like dressed dirty and you're looking scruffy, like people could give you no time of day. So now it's just like, it's just way different, man. Wearing all white, it's way different. How would you say like, for example, people, some people that do judge and like they hate how you said on Twitter, how would you like handle that? Um, you never show your hand ever, uh -huh. never. Like you can think what you want. What's really amazing was people message me that they never fucked with the brand, but now they do. It's like changing someone's, changing someone's like idea about something is the hardest thing to do because people are so stubborn these days. So to change somebody, that's like the strongest thing you could do. What would you say to the people that like, consider your brand vulgar per se? Uh, they can think what they want, but I don't consider it vulgar at all. Even like the sense of like the word sex in it, like it could have nothing to do with sex. It could have everything to do with love mm -hmm. and lust. Yeah, it's kind of like they don't see the fashion as poetry. They just see it as what it says. But the reason I chose Hot Model Sex too is just, it's such a thing where you see it and you're gonna remember it. So what advice would you give to like kids or anyone trying to start their own brand? You gotta believe in yourself for real. Believing in yourself relates back to all trusting yourself, you know, trusting your own ideas. Cause every idea that's fresh is gonna be brand new and it might sound stupid. Mm -hmm. You might tell a group of people an idea and they might look at you like an idiot, but they're the idiots, you know? Yeah. Like, like literally. I'm like, even with, with Hot Model Sex, man, I couldn't even tell you how many people that did not fuck with that shit. And then I started making bread and then I started doing this and I started doing that. And they're like, yo, that shit's actually cool. It's like, I'm already knowing the two tones are cool. You're saying this is cool because you actually looked into it and you realize that I'm not bullshitting. I'm trying to make a living off this shit. Yeah. Or you realize it's cool because like you get something out of me. So do you enjoy when people like transition over to like, oh, this is cool now? Oh, I love or it. are you like, do you push them away because like, oh, you didn't like this before? No, no, I never push any, anyone away because you're supposed to forgive and forget. But mm -hmm. anyone that likes the brand now and didn't like it, that's great. Like that's wonderful. You yeah. realize and you change and, and you actually put some effort in research. That's like, that's almost better than, than liking it from the start. I know you're kind of like crazy with the hairstyles because it comes and goes, you don't care. Yeah. What, are, what is your favorite hairstyle that you've had? Probably bleach blonde, like this. Okay. This clean, yeah. Why didn't you do the full beard too? Uh, the beard, I don't know. I don't know, everyone told me. Every, like, uh -huh. every home grill I had, they, they told me to shave the beard, but it's like, it's all goes back to trusting yourself and, and just experimenting. Like, 
we're just human beings. People really seriously need to understand that. Like we're meat and flesh. Yeah. Whatever we do straight up doesn't even really mean shit. Mm -hmm. We're on this earth, whatever we gain, like literally cars, like houses, wealth, that shit's gonna diminish. It's, yeah. it's about what you leave and, and like, how you teach people. The impact you leave yeah. pretty much. It's literally just love at the end of the day. That's what hot model sex is. So like traveling or designing, what would you say keeps you mentally healthy? Definitely designing. Designing? Wearing new clothes too and new pieces. Like it doesn't have to be new physically, but new to me is bringing new ideas to the table. When you put on a new garment or you wear like a big trench coat, you might get an idea for anything. Mm -hmm. where you want to live or where you want to do this. I can put on a trench coat and be like, damn, I kind of like rocking this trench coat. I want to go live in London because it rains a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get Anything you. could literally relate to anything. You kind of tie everything into each other, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I, I just think life is simple. Like when you yeah. really break it down, life is simple. It's about how you live, how you act, how you eat and who you kick it with. And it's just like, if you simplify those even into further, your life is so simple. Like my brand, I wanted a brand that was ran specifically how I want to run it. I want to wake up one day, make a piece and drop it or post on my story like, should I drop this piece? And then the people buying it can be involved with it and be like, yeah, you should drop it. So that's how you say you would like keep mentally healthy. Like you see life so simple, that's why. Life is simple, yeah, 100%. And if you believe in yourself, you got nothing to worry about, like for real. If you believe in yourself, you have literally nothing to worry about. Yeah. Like it's just fear. Fear is the dominant of, of all failures. You have no fear and you know it's gonna work, and it's gonna work. What would you say is the meaning of life to you? The meaning of life is love, 100%. Love across, any, like across anything, huh? Yeah. It could be love for anything. You could love to skate. You could love to make clothes. You could love your girlfriend so much that she's worth living for. And that's what hot model sex is, man. It's like love, love. It's literally the greatest thing ever. That, that's like a, that's an interesting way of capturing life in one word, because you gotta love everything you do. Yeah, love is just everything. Thank you so much for coming to Headspace. I'm yeah, ready to see this impact and more, man. Yeah. Thank you. That was, that was like a crazy, love was a crazy one.